So I wanted to try a code walkthrough of something I made recently where I wanted to see if I could put these different pieces together for this iOS augmented reality app. So one, this is using SwiftUI with Reality Kit. And I wanted to see if we could create an, an augmented reality view, point the camera around a room or a table and use a sort of off the shelf computer vision model to figure out what's in the scene. And then when we detect something in the scene with a certain level of confidence back from the ML model, create a SwiftUI text label, which uh, is done via reality kit, and place that in the scene near that object. And that's just to prove that we can put all these pieces together and because I think it's really cool. So the it's working well enough. I'll make it so you can see this. If we say, um, so right there. Whoa, crazy. Laptop, right? So there's the AR label. And I have my water bottle, so let's see what it thinks that is. Water bottle. There's the texture on the water bottle. And right now, I only let it do one label at a time. So if I go back to laptop, the uh, label water, water bottle label goes away. But, oh, and it thinks this is a website. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Pretty cool. I have it set to random colors as it detects something as we move around. What does it think this is? It's an iPhone. It's an iPhone. It can't figure it out. iPod. Close enough. So let's do the code walkthrough and I'll show you how all these pieces are working with SwiftUI. So this is right now just in one file and this is public on GitHub. It's not that much code. Um, I'm going to bounce around a little bit as the parts are instantiated in different sections and just show you what each one of these is doing. So if you're familiar at all with SwiftUI, you will recognize this. This is the boilerplate code that you need to just simply make the view show up. Um, so I did a VStack because I wanted to just let everyone know this is a portrait mode. I just locked it down so it only is a portrait mode. Why only portrait mode? When you take a picture from the frame of a camera and feed it to an ML model, the rotation of that picture matters. So if the ML model was trained with um, all of the pictures upright and you turn your phone sideways and now it's getting, if it's trained on water bottles looking like this and you give it this, it might not have any idea uh, what a what this is, even though you know it's a water bottle. So what you would have to do is keep track of the orientation of the phone, and then if the orientation of the phone is like this when you crop the image, you would have to rotate it, and then send it to the ML model for inference. If it was like this, you'd have to rotate it, and then send it to inference. And this was a quick, quick project, and I don't want to deal with that right now. So I said this this project is portrait mode. So every image is taken this way. Then I made something called wrapping view in Swift UI. And what this is doing, this is bringing back my AR view container. AR view container is also boilerplate uh, what you get when you create Swift UI with an AR kit or a reality kit uh, framework to begin with. So in the AR view container, the first thing we're going to see is this observed object called a model recognizer and there's references to it throughout the code. So let me jump up to what is this? So we can jump to definition. This is a class I made up top to handle keeping track of everything that the different parts uh, of the code might need to have access to. So first, published var AR view. Reality Kit by default just makes an AR view and I wanted to make sure I had a reference to the, the one and only AR view that's being used. And I want to make that published so it's available to other, other sections of the code. Uh, similarly, uh, there's a string I want to keep track of. I called it recognize text and it starts as nothing yet because nothing has been recognized yet. Now here, um, we're instantiating the core ML model. Let me see if I can show this to you. So this is a model that we down, I downloaded from Apple's website. If you, if you just Google Apple Core ML models, they will have a number of models you can download. 
And this is one I'd used before, so I know it works pretty well. Mobile Net V2. Um, and I'm using the exclamation point because I don't want to deal with trying and catching the model not being there, and I know it's there because I put it there. Now this section, the timer, there's probably other ways to do this, but what's going on is you will heat up your phone if you take every single frame of video that's coming in and make a model inference, which means, hey, every single frame of the phone that's going by, grab that frame as an image, crop it, send that to the model for inference, and give me back um, whatever was detected. Uh, that's just taking a lot of cycles, and for this project and for a lot of projects, you don't need to do it that often. Uh, so you can set up a timer. So this is just using timer, built-in function, schedule timer, 0.01 seconds, repeat, which means repeat this, and then, okay, every 0.1 seconds, what do you want to do? Okay, well, every 0.1 seconds, I want to call this function I made called continuously update. Let's jump down there. So continuously update. What we're essentially doing here, I know this is a bunch of code, but the short version is take whatever the camera's looking at, um, make it into an image, crop the center of it, just take the center and send that to the ML model to see what we get back. So if we step through each of these, you see again, here's observed object. We're getting a reference to that same model recognizer that was created. And then this is just getting access to some of the properties. So this is getting uh, access to the AR view. This is the session. The session is um, the running configuration. Uh, there, there's a lot you can get from session. Current frame configuration, description, the delegate. So there's a lot of things uh, things that you receive from the session that you make use of in your code. Uh, and then I wanted to end, um, and reference to the machine learning model. So right here, temp image as a CV pixel buffer. So we're asking the session, give me the current frame, and I want that as an image. And then just in case it's null, we're going to return. How could it be null? Um, if you're asking the, if you're querying continuously update before the camera has fully opened, this could be null in that instance, I think. Um, and then this I would have found via Apple's developer site or Stack Overflow, um, turning this into the exact format needed. So turning this into a CI image from what? From our pixel buffer. Then we need to make a misspelled request to the core, uh, ML model. So the way these work, this is built in. You get this with Apple's vision framework. So we're on 146. So import vision. And then we come back down here, 146. So we make a VN core ML request to what? To the model we're working with. And then this is what we're going to expect to get back, a request or perhaps an error. All right? And then you take that request we only need the center of the image. I'm not, when I hold my phone up, I'm not interested in what's detected up here or down. I, I'm going to point it at what I want to detect. So the water bottle. So I only need the center of that image. So we can do dot center crop. And then there's what's called a uh, vision image request handler. So here's our handler. Vision image request handler. Pass in our temp CI image that we created here orientation.right. Now, I know I said orientation.up, but just when I was experimenting with this, I found maybe the the way um, the model was trained was that when I have the phone in portrait mode, I'm finding it the best results when I set orientation to dot right. Then there's this. You have to handle any errors here, so a try, a try catch. So we're going to call our handler and perform. What are we performing? This request. Now, what's coming back from the model? We can go through the observations that come back. So when an ML model gives you back um, what it detects, it, in this instance, it's giving you back um, everything it think it, everything that the model thinks, I know it doesn't think, but everything the model thinks that your image might be in order from what it's most confident about to what it's least confident about. So if it's 52% sure that it's a water bottle, the first result is going to be water bottle, and you can also get access to the number 0.52, indicating how confident the model is 
um, in that prediction. If you're lucky, you're getting something like 0.9, like 90% confident. So this is a parameter that if anyone uses this code out there, you can play with this um, for fun or whatever you, whatever you feel like. I chose to say for the observations, give me the first observation, no matter what it is, give me the most confident observation. So if that observation is great, uh, I'm sorry, is less than 50%, I'm not interested. Return, let's get out of here, let's wait for the next prediction. But if we are greater than 50%, then we're gonna do something with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, this top observation and we're gonna get the identifier. Um, in this particular model, the identifier is uh, string information about what was detected. And then I, after some trial and error, I just wanna get the first word. I wanna get water bottle. I don't wanna get water bottle, comma, 0 0.5, whatever else. I just want the word. And from what this model gives you back, it's the first aspect there uh, separated by commas. So first word is our top label observation, components separated by what? By commas, because that's how it returns from this. And I want the very first um, set of characters before the first comma. That's gonna be the first word. That's gonna be water bottle. Okay. Then this part I played with a little bit, I ended up using this, which is if I'm pointing it at the water bottle, if I've already detected a water bottle and I already have the words in the air, water bottle, I don't want to do anything. I already detected that. I don't need to replace it. But if what I've currently detected in the scene is not what I've just detected, let me replace what I detected. So let's walk through that. If the recognized object, let's jump up to that. That's that string I mentioned. Recognized object, right? So if the recognized object is not equal to what we've just detected, they're different. Like if, I, if the recognized object is the word laptop and what I just detected is the word water bottle, they are not the same. We're gonna take some action. What we're gonna do is dispatch queue main.async. That's how Apple and Swift wants you to do these kind of things. We're gonna set that parameter to what we just detected. So we're going to go recog, set recognized object, new thing, first word. So what is this? Let's jump up there. This is just, just a setter function. So in this observable class here, I have a parameter called recognize object, and I'm going to call set recognize object, passing in a new string. We're going to set that equal to whatever the new string is. Okay, so that part is all about pointing the camera around, detecting something, setting that word. That's all that does. Then if we skip down a bit into the hopefully more fun Swift UI section, this is update UI view. Now this is call, this is up to um, Swift as to when to call update view, update UI view, but it's supposed to be when something changes, right? Update UI view is gonna be called. So let's pop through update UI view and see what's actually happening. What we're going to do is first, we're going to get rid of any anchors because uh, I'm just using one thing at a time. What's an anchor? An AR kit or reality kit. An, an, an anchor is some property detected in the scene that you want to keep track of. It's not something you actually, it's, the anchor isn't something you see. It's just uh, in memory tracking of something detected in the scene. So when we detect um, a table or a water bottle or a, a, a wall, we can place an anchor in that position, remember where it is. And what we can do with that anchor is we can then say, oh, I'm gonna make some 3D content and I'm gonna place it on that anchor. So you see the 3D content over there. So let me step through this next part. This whole part here is all about creating all the way down to here. So 76 through 91. This is all about creating text that's going to appear to float in the air. This is saying if water bottle, we're setting up, oh, okay, I want to be able to have the, the, the word W-A-T-E-R space B-O-T-T-L-E. I want to have that floating in space. I want to give it a random color. I want to have an extrusion depth. 
0.05, I want to use this particular font called Helvetica. This is not me being creative. This is um, kind of boilerplate stuff you can find just Googling uh, Reality Kit, how to create text. So the scene text, this is built in. This is um, something you have access to. I did not create this. Same thing here. This is a material. What we're doing is we're just setting up creating the text. But where to put it? So when we create a model entity, this is Reality Kit. Um, and the transform, this is going to relate to where this appears to be in the scene. So what I want to do is when I detect something in the scene, I want to immediately grab the position that the camera is looking at. And I want to put my words where the camera first detected that and about half a meter away from the camera. Now this part's important. If I point the camera across the room and detect something 20 feet away, the iPhone I'm using right now doesn't have LiDAR, so I do not technically know how far away that is. So for fun, for this one, I'm just winging it and saying everything I make is going to be 0 0.5 meters away from me. That is this line here, 98. So first what we're doing is saying um, right here, 93. What we're doing is saying, okay, shared model, AR view. I want the camera transform. So give me everything you know about the position. Give me the orientation of the camera at that moment. Because then what I want to do is I want to create an anchor, right? Let A N C H entity is an anchor entity. And I want to place that in the world where I want to place that where the, where the camera um, was pointing when it detected the water bottle. But the Z position, X, Y, Z, I want it to be 0 0.5 meters away. So just to try to make this clear. So if I point my, my phone over here toward the water bottle, I want to say, all right, I want that 3D content to appear about here. What is the next step that we're doing here? Min, text min. Oh, this is um, to change the X position a little. Uh, what this is about is sometimes as I'm moving the camera around, I find it'll, the camera won't necessarily be in the center by the time it detects something like the laptop or the water bottle. It might be um, uh, not all the way there, but it detects it pretty quickly and then it places it in the scene not quite in the middle. So I did a little bit of changes to try to get a little closer to the middle for me. And then what we do is we take the anchor entity that we created and we add the child, which is the text entity. So basically what we're saying is, okay, there's an invisible thing I've added to the scene, which is an anchor entity. I'm keeping track of a place in the world, or I'm asking the software to keep track of a place in the world, this place. You can't see that. I'm just putting some code there to say, this is something I want to keep track of. But then I've created this 3D information, this text. Okay. And I'm adding it as a child to that anchor, which means then that becomes visible. So then we go to our shared object. We go to our AR view, the one and only AR view and the scene that it creates. And we add the anchor, the anchor entity. And then magically our words appear to be floating in the sky. So then as we move around and detect something new, uh, if we detect something new, that's going to be down here within continuously update. If it's something new, that means what was recognized is not the same. Um, the first word is not the same as what is the currently recognized object. Then we'll call the dispatch queue. We'll set the new recognized object to the new thing. First word, pop up to the top, right? So that's uh, set recognized object. And because there's that change there, update UI view is going to be called and update U UI view is going to say, are there any anchors in the scene right now? And there are, because we already detected something. It's going to say, okay, get rid of all those. We're making something new. And it's going to say the same thing we just did, create text that I can make it look like it's floating in the sky. And the actual text where the word comes from, this is right here. Record, recognized object. Give me a random color. Give me the same extrusion depth. Helvetica, yes, yes, yes. Where were we when we detected that? Can we transform the camera? Set that transform. Move the Z plane back about zero point, not about 0 0.5 meters. 
and then add that to the scene so that now I see that. So I know there's a lot of talking. We'll see that working again. So we've detected a laptop. Here's the words. They appear to be floating in the sky. Move over here. We detect something new. What is it? It's a water bottle. I would prefer you to be over there, water bottle. But I guess your words are going to be a little bit to the side. Laptop. Do you know it's a water bottle? Yeah. What does that say? Computer, keyboard, laptop, laptop, computer, keyboard, water bottle, magic. Augmented reality looks like magic. So this is on GitHub. I know that was a long explanation. Um, I hope this is useful to someone. I hope this is useful to me in the future. Cool. Good night.